Hello and welcome to RTTV, your special three-day webcast live from the CV show at Birmingham, brought to you in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. I'm Brian Weatherly and over the next three days we're going to bring you the very best of the Birmingham Truck Show. The new vehicle launches, the interviews with the talking heads, the glitz and the glamour. It's all going to be on RTTV. Now around about this time I would introduce you to my co-host Andy Salter, but Andy being Andy is nowhere in sight. And where he's got to is anybody's guess. the hassle I've had getting this vehicle. <laughs> what are you doing with this? Zero emissions Modec. It's a green show. We're here at Birmingham. Environmentally friendly is the word of the show. So I've got us a zero emission vehicle. Now get in and we'll hit the halls. You okay? Yeah, fine. You do this to me every time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I've struggled to get hold of this vehicle. I've got it now. Now let's go to work. All right, let's hit the halls. That Andy Salter, when he gets going, there's no stopping him. Well, it's taken a long time, but Volvo has finally brought two-pedal technology down the weight range. This is the box they've done it with, their iSync, which is available for the FL range. It has a torque input of 1,050 newton meters and is for trucks up to 280 horsepower. Let's take a closer look at it. All synchronized iSync box is ideal for distribution operations, where the driver's left foot normally gets one hell of a hammering. Oil change intervals are 300,000 kilometers and it has exactly the same service interval as an FL with a manual gearbox. And from the present to the future, have you ever wondered what tomorrow's truck will be like? Well, on the Volvo stand, you can see tomorrow's truck and you can have your say on it. At last year's Rye show, Volvo unveiled no less than seven, that's seven, count them, alternative fuel options for truck operators. Now that's a heck of a lot of choice to wade through. Have they managed to boil it down? To tell me a bit more about it, here's Patrick Clintbaum from Volvo. Uh, what we need to do is to discuss the different alternatives. Uh, we, it's not for Volvo to choose what kind of fuel, but we want to discuss them and look how they fulfill some uh, sustainability criteria. And when you look at it, you see fuels from gasification. Synthetic diesel, DME and methanol looks very promising. But we really need to look at sustainability of fuels before we decide where to go. You're watching Road Transport TV in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. I've just got wind that Jim Fitzpatrick, the Transport Minister, is here at the CV show today. So I'm going to grab two seconds with him to find out what the CV show means to government. Jim, Mr Andy. Fitzpatrick, Minister for Transport, first impressions of Birmingham CV show. Andy, Mr Salter, um, this is a, a great exhibition. Um, it's uh, brilliant to be able to come, albeit briefly, just prior to the opening to see Britain's premier commercial vehicle show. I mean, there's just so much to see and do here. It's great. Fantastic. I'm sure that you've, you've already spotted that the spotlight is on the environment. It's on efficiency. Um, do you like what you've seen so far? We're here at the Modex stand, electric, low emission, zero emission vehicles. Yeah, we've just, uh, we've just been looking at some of the exhibitions here, which are very exciting, and talking to other exhibitors and how they are dealing with uh, the environment and what they can contribute to tackling climate change. It is something that everybody's concerned about. And to see the commercial vehicle world taking it so seriously is very reassuring. Sure, it's a real showcase of British industry as well, I think. You, you must be pleased to see that. It's a showcase for British industry, both in terms of manufacture, in terms of innovation, um, but also in terms of marketing and salesmanship. Um, there's so much to see and do here. It's no surprise to me that they're going to get 30,000 visitors over the next three days and that everybody's really interested in who's coming and wanting to show off that which they've got to exhibit. So um, it's going to be a great show and I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy it. Sure. I'm not going to let the Transport Minister go without asking you about fuel prices. UK operators are being crippled by fuel. Any positive news? 
Um, well, certainly the news that we announced last week that we were going to put another £24 million into VOSA, the Enforcement Agency. Uh, we're going to recruit nearly another 100 um, officers. We're going to go 24-7. We're going to get more whims in. We're going to be targeting those international hauliers who are a danger on our roads and who are trading unfairly. In that instance, I hope we can reassure the British road haulage industry that we're on their side and we want to look after them. So no reduction in VED? Um, you need to ask the Chancellor about that, Andy. It's not my territory, sadly. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. You're very welcome. It's 12 months since Modec burst onto the scene at last year's CV show. Look around you at the Modec stand and you'll see some big, high-profile clients. I've got Sales and Marketing Director for Modec, Jeff Rayner, with me. And just going to give us a quick update on what's been happening over the past 12 months with the company. Well, there's been an awful lot happening, really, Andy. As you say, last year we launched the company. Uh, we've got a whole range of different customers. I mean, say this time last year, we'd, we'd sold to Tesco, and we bought people like Amy and Accord. But we've, we've broadened that out. We've got into the, sort of like the parcel sector, more into facilities management, more into home delivery companies. Uh, and, you know, the vehicle's now created a bit of a stir. A lot of people have seen the billboard value of the vehicle, and, uh, you know, they, they've sort of taken them on board and seen the benefits of having that. Fantastic. And it looks like a really exciting place to be at the moment, Modec. What happens now in terms of product development? This one seems fairly well established, and the operators that we're speaking to tell us that it's given good reliability and service. Yeah, that's quite right. I mean, I think that the, the, the main thing we're looking at at the moment is, is to enhance the range with things such as air suspension and air conditioning. We are looking at different sort of sizes of vehicles, perhaps extending the wheelbase. Uh, we are still trying to develop a minibus as well. So there's quite a lot on the drawing board, but we spent a lot of time over these last 12 months getting our vehicle right, making sure when an operator does take it, it works and it works properly for them. Thanks, Jeff. Earlier on today, I got my hands, well, these guys gave me the keys to one of the Modec vehicles and I've taken it for a spin. The Modec really is very simple to drive. I was told earlier that it's just point and press and it really is. Watch. Engage, drive, release the handbrake, put your foot down and off we go. Wonderful. The most important thing that strikes you immediately behind the wheel of the Modec is this fantastic visibility. There's glass everywhere, You've got lovely big mirrors, wonderful visibility all around, so there's no excuse when you're out and about in the urban environment. Impressive thing about the manoeuvrability, it's a wonderful tight steering lock. It means you really can turn it on a sixpence. That's going to be handy in the urban environment. When you want to bring it to rest, Put the vehicle into neutral, handbrake on, release the seatbelt, and the vehicle automatically shuts off. Now that's impressive. You're watching Road Transport TV in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. Well, they're here, the new Isuzu Heavyweights, 18 tons and below. It's taken a couple of full starts, but they're finally with us. And can Isuzu deliver at 18 tonnes and below with haulier customers what they've delivered at 7.5 tonnes and below? To give me the answer to that question, I'm joined by Nikki King, Isuzu Truck UK's ebullient lady boss. Nikki, tell us the truth. Yes, of course we can. Don't forget, Isuzu's world leader. It's world leader in 130 countries where it's always supplied heavy truck. They've just been fairly slow in Europe. We've proved over the last 12 years that our service is second to none. I see no reason why we can't continue. Of course we can. For the 2008 CV show, Isuzu has introduced an entirely new UK lineup from 3.5 to 18 tonnes, all sharing a modular cab system. Underneath the bonnet, there's a choice of four and six cylinder Euro 4 EGR diesels from 150 to 300 horsepower, and Isuzu's Easy Shift box is standard on the 7.5 tonner. It seems like everywhere you turn nowadays, there's going to be somebody shouting to you, stop, risk assessment. And nowhere is that more so than when you're working at height on the back of a truck. Or with a device like this, a truck-mounted forklift that you've got to mount and demount from the driver's cab. But not anymore, because Moffat Mountie have come up with a device. Here it is, that allows you to mount and demount a truck-mounted forklift from ground level. And to tell us all about it, here's John Bailey from Moffat. John. Hi, Brian. About this time last year, we had a, an inquiry from the HSC who uh, had a, an accident with a, a competitor's machine, and they came to us to ask advice on how we monitored the health and safety of actually climbing and, and, and getting down from the vehicle. And from that, we developed this remote control system. Um, it's, it takes exactly the same time as it does with a conventionally climbing up, but it saves all the safety. 
Now, John, we'd love to be able to show you how it works, and we'd love to see it on RTTV, but we can't. And why can't we? After three, health, health and safety. safety. At first glance, the new Actros probably doesn't look that much different from the old model. But in fact, there are no less than 37 distinct changes compared to the old Actros. And in third generation Actros, there are a number of major changes inside the cab. So let's take a look at them. And here we are. The first thing you notice is this. PowerShift 2 Auto, standard on all road-going Actros tractors. There's a new table, a bed that converts into a lounger, and a revised dashboard with a bit of bling in it. But above all else, what Mercedes is doing with new Actros is offering it with a series of safety packages, including one called Active Brake Assist, that detects when there's a stationary or slow-moving vehicle in front of the driver, and if he doesn't do anything, it actively applies the brakes for him. And this is how it works. I've seen that clip about 10 times now, and each time it's very impressive. Now Mercedes will say that Active Brake Assist won't stop every collision in every circumstance, but what it will do is reduce the impact speed of the truck hitting a vehicle in front. And given the choice between being hit in the backside by a truck doing 56 miles an hour and 15, I know which I'd choose. Active Brake Assist is an option, but for those operators in Germany who specify it, they get a reduction in their insurance premium. Now I just wonder whether UK insurance companies will show a similar attitude towards proactive safety. What do you think? In October this year, ASEA, that's the Association of Commercial Vehicle Manufacturers, will launch a new E9 lubricant standard. This will see lubes shift from a traditional mineral oil to the so-called Group 2 base oils. To find out exactly what Group 2 base oils mean for the operators at Euro 5 and Euro 6, we've caught up with Alan Outhwaite. He's from Chevron Global Base Oils, and he's going to tell us all about it. Alan. At the heart of every diesel engine lubricant, you'll find a base oil. And the better the base oil, the better the lubricant. New emissions regulations mean that products need to be introduced to meet future engine requirements. And lubricant formulators will have to be very selective on the type of base oil they use. Modern Group 2 base oils will give outstanding performance in today's demanding engines. But what makes them special is that they are virtually sulfur-free and have excellent antioxidation resistance too. And that makes them very important as we move towards Euro 5 and eventually Euro 6, where we'll need oils that are low in sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulfur. The so-called low saps to meet those new emission standards. With the arrival of the new ACR E9 standard, operators will be able to use a new breed of engine lubricant based on Group 2 base oils rather than fully synthetics. And it's these Group 2 base oils that will give excellent results when it comes to meeting new low emission standards. Chevron has had Group 2 base oils in the US for many years, and these have delivered outstanding performance in a number of critical areas, including soot handling. Chevron has a long and sustained history of excellence in the manufacture of Group 2 base oils. In fact, over 60% of the world's premium base oils are manufactured using Chevron technology. When the new ACR E9 standard arrives in October of this year, it will create significant challenges for lubricant manufacturers and will change the whole dynamics of the European market. The end of day one on RTTV, how's it been for you? Well, the highlights for me, Brian, environmental issues. Everybody's focusing around that. Everybody's jostling for thought leadership. And then also, you know, I grabbed a scoop on road transport television this morning when I managed to get older Jim Fitzpatrick, who's the Minister for Transport. We tried to get him to commit to reducing fuel duty for operators, but he told us to go off and talk to Alistair Darling at the Treasury. Well, there's a politician for you. From our point of view, it's been health and safety for me with Moffitt Solution, particularly for working at height. So what are you going to be looking at tomorrow? New Hino, there's a new 18-tonner that I think you've driven for this week's issue of Commercial Motor. So I'm looking forward to having a look at that. And yourself? I'm going to be looking at the new Renault Magnum and Lander. And you'll be able to see all those stories on RTTV tomorrow in association with Chevron Global Lubricants.